Hello. So today I'm talking to MSPs who are using Traction or are interested in using the Traction EOS Entrepreneur Operating System. And so the theme of this is how, how to get your team all on the same page and building process and people for high flow, getting work done quickly. So I am sharing my story today about how we are using it. Um, so here's a picture of our team from pre-COVID. And actually, we've got multiple teams because we have two MSPs. There's Kirkhoff Technologies, there's Crafty Penguins, and then we have Top Left, which is the software you're familiar with. And the book I'm talking about is Traction. It's got the black cover. That's actually a, a tire tread on there, uh, the an analogy of tr getting traction. But I love it so much, I've actually blown it up, and I've got it on the back cover of my wall here. How to get a grip on your business. Because as the saying goes, can't remember where it comes from, but vision without execution is hallucination. So there's, I'm going to jump right into what is traction? What are the main seven tools? So there's the accountability chart and some other things like the people analyzer and get it, one at capacity, GWC. So I'll show you a picture of the accountability chart. Uh, this is one of the hardest things to figure out, but if you figure it out, it's, it's really powerful of... Often our problems are not about the what people are doing wrong, but we've got the wrong person in the seat. So if we can get clarity in the seats we need and the getting the right people in the seat and elevate them and having them learning how to delegate properly, um, that's, that's where power comes in, is getting that figured out. No conflicts, just good flow, good teamwork. And so the people analyzer is a tool to uh, measure for each person how do they align to the core values? Are they above the bar, below the bar on the core values, as well as GWC? So that's get is, do they get the role? W is, do they want that role? And C is, do they have the capacity to do it? So it could be physical, mental, technical skills, emotional capacity there. Second tool is rocks. So these are typically three to five initiatives each quarter that are sizable. It's not one hour or 10 hours in the whole quarter, in the whole 90 days. It might be 50 or 100 hours of concentrated effort that a person or a team might be doing. And again, the focus there is less is more. And so we've been using traction for probably going on 10 years now. So, um, in the beginning, not so good at rocks. We're getting better now. We're still not perfect. A tendency is still to bite off more than we can chew. Too many rocks or the scope too, too, too ambitious. So that's something we've been working hard on is scaling them down and then committing to it, just getting her done. Uh, meeting Pulse is a big part of the entrepreneurial operating system of uh, actually working backwards. You've got your annual meetings, your quarterly meetings, and then your, your weekly meetings. They call a level 10 format because after in each meeting, you're, it's the same agenda, same time, same place, same people every week. At the end of the meeting, you rate it 1 to 10. Every person rates it 1 to 10, and the goal is we're shooting for a level 10. So if it's, people gave it a 7 or 8, we might ask them, so what can we do next week to make it better? IDS is the tool for how to identify your issues, discuss them, and solve them once for all. So doing the five whys, digging down, digging deep, what is it? Is this a role issue? Is it a process? What is it? What needs to be done? And then solving it. And so it's a really good way of doing the meeting pulses throughout the year. They take time, but it's been worth it. Scorecard is a key concept um, of five to ten key metrics to look at every week in, in that team. So each team may have their own, and then the company as a whole may have their own, depending on the size of your organization. Uh, and then a VTO is a Vision Traction Organizer. So it's a one page, well actually two pages, because it's both sides of one sheet of paper. There's a vision side, and then there's a traction side of how do you get to that, answering eight questions around your core focus, niche, target market, those sorts of things. The three-step process documenter, they say is one of the key things. To us, it seemed really trivial. Um, these, these core processes and not enough steps. So we're just thinking detail or oriented yet, but what are the what are the flows of or the steps in onboarding a client? What are the steps in closing a ticket? Those sorts of things. But that's not what the three step process document refers to. Um, so we actually don't, that's the one thing we don't do. Everyone has a number that they're accountable for and responsible for and report on uh, from top to the bottom in the organization. And then there's a bunch of other secondary tools once the above are in place. So this is kind of the recommended order is first figuring out your accountability chart, your leadership team, your exec team, and going down from there. Um, and then getting your rocks going. Uh, yes, so 
this is what the accountability chart looks like, the core of it from the book. Um, so you've got your visionary at the top and your integrator. Uh, so this might be, you might call it a CEO and then a COO, a CEO and a president, or it could be CEO and operations manager, that sort of thing. So the visionary is about ideas, creativity, problem solving, big relationships, culture, R&D, more on the emotion integrator is more uh, process, structure, numbers, P&L, a bit more finance, special projects, that sort of thing. Uh, it's rare that you're going to find one person that does both. So they're, they're advocating quite often is get uh, somebody full-time in each of these boxes. Um, these actually do not need to be full-time, especially in smaller organizations, as you just may not have that. Uh, you may have the visionary doing some of the integration plus somebody else supporting him. It could be a fractional integrator. The visionary does not need to be the CEO. It could be a strong technician you have in your team in an MSP environment who's got the vision, but it's not CEO, but it's just, yeah, no one knows the market. Um, at a, at a, so it's kind of at a lower level, but they contribute to vision. So that can happen as well. It could be a CTO, could be the visionary, um, but doesn't do any sales. That could happen as well. Um, but being clear on these roles is really important and who's doing it. Um, in my organization, is I've got multiple units. So, I got, so there's one vision. I, I'm the visionary across everything, but then I have integrators and people who support me in these areas in each unit. And then underneath the visionary integrator, you've got three core roles. So the sales slash marketing, operations, and finance. And, and this could be, especially in this la uh, layer, this third level, you can really custom tailor that. It could be up to seven different roles here, depending on the organization. You could split out research and development, you can split out IT, sales and marketing could be separate, etc. And then each, you're going to be an owner for each of these box that's going to do the leadership, management, and accountability for the people uh, downstream from there. So I've put on the top of my slide the owner's box. So that's a key concept of the book is keep the owner in his box. Because the owner could be the integrator, could be the visionary, could be multiple people. Um, but because somebody is uh, owns the company, uh, we still have to honor the accountability process. Uh, so we want to keep the owner in their box. So having a dotted line between that or, or kind of a firewall is keep them out of some of these decisions. Now they could be in a box. They could be. A, they could be the visionary. Um, they could be yeah, anywhere. But um, making sure they're not trumping other decisions, we, we have to honor the accountability structure. Otherwise, you'll never shift a culture. So here's an example of the Word document that Traction provides for your uh, VTO for the vision side. Your core values, core focus. Sorry, my core values are up on the wall here. You can see that uh, core focus. Your ten-year target, BHAG. You can customize it. That could be three to five years. If you can't think of 10 years, that, that could be a shorter target as well. Your marketing strategy, your proven process, and your guarantee. Three-year picture. And then on the other side, you'd have your one-year uh, picture and your quarterly rocks. So there's a number of books that, that the authors of Traction provide. There's the main Traction book. As I mentioned, there's a rocket fuel, which really gets into that dynamic between the visionary and the integrator. I highly re recommend that one, even if you're not going to hire an integrator soon, um, but still understanding that, because that role needs to be fulfilled somehow, even if it is the CEO. If you're in a company that's like under 10 people, normally the CEO would be the visionary and the integrator. They might be starting to get like a service manager to help them. Um, but yeah, under, uh, great book. Get a Grip is a fable. Um, story format, got great characters. I recommend that as well. Once you've gotten to the other books, read, read the novel. How, how to be a great boss around leadership. So that can be give to, given to anybody in leadership in the company, managers and supervisors as well. And then finally, there's the What the Heck is EOS book. We actually give that to every single hire. So they can get to get familiar with some of the terminology of traction that we use. Like what is a rock? What is GWC? What are core values? Those sorts of things. So it's, it's like 10 bucks or something. So we bought a box and we give that to every new hire. So something, just speaking from experience, is to remember that this is about implementing traction is about progress, not perfection. It can take three to five years to master this stuff, depending where you're at and your commitment. And so I've learned to keep going back to the basics, reevaluating. There's different assessment tools to see how we're doing on these core areas. There's kind of six core areas and strengthening the foundation. 
because sometimes the division laps or the metrics laps lap. So then we focus that quarter on beefing that up. Uh, so yes, keep going around the circle and, and making those six components better and better over time. This system is scalable from under five employees to 500 plus. Just you got to adapt some things and some things might not apply, but the core of it does apply of delegating leadership, accountability, metrics, roles, core values. And the earlier you establish this, and the quicker your organization can grow and succeed. Um, and I've seen is that when, it, when I start to get the right people and the numbers and the vision coming together, then I start to feel the magic. So it can take a bit to get there, but put the work in, it's worth it. Uh, leverage and implementation consultant, uh, we did that about um, five years ago, um, but don't to re-implement because we kind of lost our way, so we re-implemented. Um, but you obviously, you don't want to rely on a coach or consultant long term. You need to run and own the operating system your company runs on. And the other thing is EOS is, is, is a framework, um, but don't get so married to it that you lose your way. Right? And so what I'm trying to say is you need to build your own operating system. Like what applications will run on top of your operating system? If you use analogy of like a computer operating system, um, you'll need other things. Like it doesn't get into very great detail on... Um, any one thing, it's the overall framework or operating system. You, you still need to get into the details of HR and finance and your marketing and sales process and how do you close your deals and all these things. Um, so some things when you're, when you're trying this and you're offsite and you're working through it, it just might not click. It might not feel right in your gut. You're like, ah, I don't get this. Just accept it, move on and come back to it later when you are ready. Um, but just realize that not having 100% clarity on that thing, it could be your 10-year vision or some of the core values. If you're not clear on those things, it's going to hold you back. And so we've done work in the last 18 months to clarify the core values, and it's been very powerful. And that's after having initially established them 10 years ago, refi refined them, rewrote them, um, rolled them out, and it's been very useful. So we've got integrated to our quarterly performance reviews with employees, to hiring, all these things, and it's been very powerful um, but it took us 10 years to to dial that in and sometimes the obvious thing is sitting in front of you but you don't see it because you're you're in the you get the tunnel vision so you need you may need help and it may just take time to figure that out and don't blindly copy and mimic what other companies are doing whether it's sales or marketing or EOS is you got to find your way and define it So I want to talk about, as an MSP, is some tools and processes we built around traction. Um, so obviously we started with the template from EOS. Um, actually, we originally had one for everything we're doing. In the last six months, we split that out. So each of the three businesses that I mentioned, the two MSPs, Windows and Linux, and top left, each have their own VTO now. So we started that word template. Haven't changed it really at all from that. So. And then we use a Confluence wiki to break down each rock and flesh out the core values, have it all very accessible. We have training modules for new hires that go through there. Um, so everyone has access to the vision, the mission, the yearly plans, the quarterly plans. It's all in there because our wiki is our knowledge database, intranet, all these things, as well as our client documentation. And then we have ConnectWise projects to track each of the rocks and make sure they get done. And then these tickets can flow into top left board so we can make sure they happen around all the other work that has to happen. And obviously track the time. We use SQL queries in our Grafana dashboards to find different metrics from ConnectWise and report that into a role specific dashboards and our traction scorecards. So it's all real time. We're not having to crunch data manually. It's all in there laid out the way we need it to be laid out. Uh, so as I mentioned, we're using Grafana, or not using BrightGauge, but Grafana, an open source project for role-specific KPIs and graphs and the overall scorecard. Uh, we link the traction materials into the onboarding docs that the new hires read. We give them the what the heck is the EOS book, and so on. So how do, how do combine the traction EOS, your PSA, ConnectWise or Autotask, and Kanban? So here's some of the things we're doing. So we track the rocks, the rocks as projects in the PSA. Important thing is not going overboard on your visualization. Because if you set up your Kanban board with your tickets and your neglected work, if everything is red, then basically nothing is red and nobody cares. So um, define what good means and 
highlight these things, but you might want to, if it's, your stuff is a mess and it's chaos, just start simple and then build it up from there. Roles and accountability are very important. So that's a traction thing, but also in Kanban. It's like who owns the boards, who sets them up. Elevate your, educate your team and elevate your, your service managers, your project managers to define the flow of these projects, of what are the ticket statuses, map it into your columns in, in top left and own that. And you got to work with the team, get the feedback from them on how do we visualize it? We change the background of the card if it's overdue. We put borders around the card, those sorts of things. And then accountability is hold them accountable to not having read, not having wor uh, neglected work, go too high, those sorts of things. So we have some uh, direction for that in our uh, 12 weeks to top left, to Kanban process as well as around the service delivery roles in a Kanban lean world. Uh, elevate your managers uh, to do more, make more decisions, define the flow, not telling them exactly what to do, but saying, hey, here's what we need, need to get to as a performance. How do we get there? Um, having a board for each team and core process. So Kanban is all about team. The team is owning the work and the clients. It's not a, it's not a golfing game where everyone's golfing their own game. This is a group sport. So they've got to be working from the same page. If each got their own view, like you can easily do in ConnectWise is you have your own list of tickets sorted the way you want. Now you're all on a different order and singing a different tune. Uh, so get those uh, team-based boards. And as well as thinking about the core process, is this a, a MSP client onboarding process? Is this a workstation deployment? Is this help desk? Is this knock? Different things. Uh, have boards for each core process. And then define the flow for that. So create and optimize high velocity flow. So we. The focus should be on not starting tickets, but completing them, getting it done quickly. And we do that by minimizing work in progress for each person, for each team, getting them to work together to swarm tickets and get them done, and measure the result based on what's actually getting completed. So defining what good means. So for each step is um, how long can it be there? So for how long can it be in a scheduled status? How long can it be waiting client before it goes red because we haven't followed up. Um, so define what neglected means, your different limits. Um, so a lot of options in top left for that. Uh, huddles, the traction book doesn't really get into daily huddles, um, but that's a key part of lean Kanban thinking around the world. We've got some blog posts on the website about that, how to run an effective daily huddle. So in the old days, we, well, two years ago, we had 65 inch LCD screen in our huddle area here in the office and we huddled around it and now because we've grown and because of uh, remote work it's all online it's by team so instead of we don't have 25 people around a LCD screen it's maybe groups of seven or eight people max that are getting online on a zoom or a teams call some just do it in slack but reporting on what are they stuck on what was yesterday what are they doing today that sort of thing so lots of great information online about daily huddles or stand-ups as they're called uh, the visionary should contribute to what performance does he want for the company. And then a team has to figure out how to do that. So for me, I want to be able to onboard a new MSP client, be ready for support in a week. And they may, may need, might need a bit more time to deploy hardware, those sorts of things, but all on board, documented, ready to answer the phone and tickets for support within a week from the time we get the money and sign contract from them. Um, but define that for everything. Is there is a support ticket? How long should these be taking on average? And then the team's got to set up the flow to en enable that. Don't leave it up to chance. Again, I mentioned this before. We want everyone working from the same page. Uh, if they've got different views, different filters, different sorts, they're not on the same page. Even though when you walk around the office, it might look, hey, they're all on the same thing, but they're not. They're looking at different orders. So it needs to be everybody working top left should be the same ticket for every every person. Um, so this is hard to do in, in tools like ConnectWise because you can't sort the columns and remember that and enforce it across the team. If you sort by age, how you how, how useful is that? Or sort by client name, never mind multi multi column sort. So in in top left you can enforce the desired ranking and drag and drop like you would sticky sticky notes on a whiteboard on a physical Kanban. So do educate on WIP, that's work in progress, and TOC, that's theory of constraints. A great way to do that is, well, there's two books. Um, I would I'd start with the Phoenix Project book. I've got that on my back wall as well. A novel about DevOps and IT. Um, we give that to all our team members. We're actually doing a 
Friday afternoon a readers group study of that as well. Great discussions going on there. As the theory of constraints goes back like 40, 50 years ago, coming from Japan. Um, another classic book is called The Goal um, by Elihu Goldratt. Check out that one as well. Um, if you can find a copy on Amazon. And these things will really help reduce overwhelm and burnout in your team. Uh, people can get down to working just like one or two tickets at a time and on to the next rather than having 10 started, half completed tickets. Those things are so stressful. When you're getting to the end of the day and you're like, what did I do? <laughs> I worked my butt off, but I don't I got nothing to show for it. That is very stressful. So get the high flow, low work in progress going. Be a game changer. So uh, before I let you go, I wanted to share one thing we have available for you. It's our completed ticket challenge. It is a three week boot camp for finishing work before starting new work. We're gonna put this into action for you in a very short amount of time. So there's four guides in your inbox each week with video training. There's a weekly uh, community call on Zoom where you can work with other MSPs and uh, one of our coaches around these things. And we're, sh we're screen sharing, seeing, looking at your systems, providing feedback, helping each other on this, how to get that high flow. And there's an online community access as well. So you can share and have dialogue there throughout the week. And so we've got a graph there from one of the companies we worked with, an MSP, of um, reducing their assigned and stalled tickets over only three weeks. Huge changes there. So this is a quote from a client from James in Australia saying, I wish the completed ticket challenge existed when we first adopted Kanban. So he started later on this, but so you can start this immediately when you start top left or any time. You can repeat it as often as you want. He continues, it's all the Kanban ticket workflow onboarding you need to get started. And so the link is on the website to get started with the completed ticket challenge for MSPs. And that is only $1.99, including a extension of a couple weeks on your trial. So if you want to jump on a, a personal demo, uh, hit the link here, or hit there should be a link on the top of the website here to uh, get that call scheduled and understand what's going on in your system and get massive transformation for you too. So what does your company's operating system need to do and to be so that you can reach your vision and live your mission every single day? I'll leave that with you. For videos on how to transform your project and service delivery, check out the blog or our YouTube channel. We've got the webinar recordings there. Uh, we've got a white paper on how to deal with uh, neglected work, how to just eradicate that. So if you're not getting calls, clients calling about a ticket that fell between the cracks and it wasn't dealt with, I highly recommend the Phoenix Project book and there's another book on uh, visualizing work as well. Look forward to engaging with you and uh, interacting you with in peer groups or in uh, our upcoming summit or in other uh, places soon.